an executive order that gives financial autonomy to state, legislature and judiciary, which was recently signed by President Mahmoud Buhari, Ghana's reaction from the Nigerian people. And also today, the calls for restructuring of the country is still in the news. And this time, social political groups, the Ohaneze Indigo and Afeni Ferre, believe they have the answer. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ark. An executive order for the implementation of financial autonomy for state legislature and judiciary, recently signed by President Mahmoud Wari, has generated mixed reactions from several stakeholders in Nigeria. And due to this development, the state legislature and judiciary will be able to get funds directly from the Accountant General of the Federation in the event of a failure of any state government to release allocations meant for it for them. And joining us to discuss this is Dr. Austin Nwese, former gubernatorial candidate for SDP Ebony State via Zoom, and also political analyst Mr. Goloba, also via Zoom. And we have with us legal practitioner Evans Ufeli via phone. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining on the show tonight. You're welcome. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, so I'm just hoping we're going to have a very um, insightful and a deliberate conversation tonight on this issue. So I'll start off with every one of you. I'll need your reaction to this now. The, the signing is the signing of the executive order by Mr. President for the implementation of financial autonomy for the state legislature and judiciary. A right move. Mr. Bolaba, let me go with you first. Benny. Yes, Mr. Bolaba. As a puritanical constitutionalist, as a federalist, an organic federalist, I must say that it gives cause for concern because a puritanical interpretation of the section of the Constitution that that executive at that time intends to bring to life, a puritanical interpretation may tell one that it is an overstretch, executive overstretch by the president because there is a provision that says all the monies of the state must go into the consolidated revenue fund of the state. However, as a pragmatist, a pragmatic citizen of Nigeria, knowing the horrid history of how gubernatorial characters have arrested our constitution and given the fact that a prominent, a prominent lawyer got a pronouncement of one of the superior courts of the federation in favor of making sure that the two organs of the government Legis legislature and judiciary should get the adequate appropriated revenues and also the amendment of the constitution. I'm sitting here as a pragmatist thinking, okay, let's work with it, but let's find a way of ultimately amending all the segments of that, of section 121 not only three, because section 1213, uh, because section 1211 states that all revenue must go into the consolidated revenue fund of the state, and it is from the revenue, consolidated revenue fund of the state that money should go out. But in view of this executive order now, the president has given the accountant general of the federation a right to contradict and contravene that section. So I'm sitting here now as a puritanical constitutionalist and a federalist, a bit disturbed. And in, indeed, this is a move that further asphyxiates organic federalism. But as a pragmatist, a, an avid political watcher, I think anything that curtails 
the enormous and abused powers of the governors is something I want to see. Dr. Austin, do you subscribe to Mr. Belova's view or you have a divergent opinion to his submission? I'm also concerned in line with uh, what Boloba said. Um, I'm very worried uh, because uh, knowing that the uh, 1999 constitution is faulty, uh, being handed over to us by the military, a whole lot of things going on and there is an attempt by the uh, National Assembly to amend the constitution. Uh, but these are just creaming the market. You know, what should happen is some revolutionary thing that will uh, jettison the present constitution and draft a new constitution that will take care of some of the things that fundamental things that are, uh, you know, troubling Nigeria today. What this means is that, you know, when the state legislature had an encounter with the uh, speaker of one of the state house of assemblies, and because of this thing coming up, I, I, you know, the, the guy had started being rude to the governor. You know, telling the governor basically that you can't tell me what to do because we'll soon get autonomy and all that. So it's going contrary to the, um, you know, to the uh, uh, state executive as well. And what this happens is that the federal government, by this uh, executive order 10, is also trying to have control more, more of the, more consolidating the unitary government that we are trying to, you know, to abandon. You know, by because they say that he who pays the piper pays, uh, 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 or something pays it too, you know, or something like that. So, but the point is that our democracy, our federation is at, at risk. The, the fundamental thing is just to review the whole constitution. They could have allowed a process set in place to complete, you know, its course before this executive order could come in. Maybe they already saw where. Uh, the governors and other parts of the district would be, uh, were planning to go, but they may not, it might not be favorable, favorable to them. That's why they use executive order, you know, to uh, come up with all of this. Okay. So I'm a bit worried, just like Bula Oba, and uh, I hope that, you know, the we could just take care of the fundamental things by writing a new constitution instead of this, you know, patch, 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 patch thing. It doesn't work. Well, Evans Ophelia, now some governors have kicked against this move, the signing of the executive order, and they see it as a breach of ongoing talks between them and the presidency on how to go about the autonomy. Do, do you think they are right about this? Well, there, there are two ways to look at, at this. First of all, let's ask ourselves, in as much as the executive order is transiently defective, but let's ask ourselves why the executive order in the first place? Why should the president sign executive order 10? It was because section 121 subsection 3 of the 1999 constitution as amended, which actually states that there should be autonomy, financial autonomy between the legislature and the judiciary of the state to ensure that the two institutions, you know, um, have the requisite uh, financial muscle and power to stand independently to restart their functions as constitutionally recognized. Now, this section of the law have been observed in breach by the executive of the states. The executive of the states have usurped the resources of these two arms of government, thereby creating a clog in the wheel of the doctrine of separation of power. So the president now is of the view that the monies appropriated for these two arms of government will henceforth, by the executive order 10, be deducted from source and sent directly to those two arms of government. Since the, uh, uh, the governors have consistently breached the provisions of the law. Now, why that is cogent, why that is an intervention that is set out to cure a mischief, 
It is also in itself overbearing, runs contrary to the principles of federalism, and then truncates the present structures of true federal structure. That is to say that the relationship between the president and the governor is not that of a father and a child. It's not that of a principal and a student. The state are autonomous. They are supposed to manage their resources as an autonomous entity. But because of the kind of governors we have produced over the years, governors that have turned themselves to monarchs, governors that uh, take on the, the, the fledged apparel of an emperor, they usurp resources, usurp authority, and render every other arm of government within the states running after them, begging cap in hand to function as an arm of government. All right, Bolaba, that let, is me the let, me, let me interject here. Let me interject. Now, Bolaba, if, if you can recall, it was reported that two groups had established a committee to work out modalities for autonomy just before the COVID-19 crisis. Now, the presidency had, through the late chief of staff, Malam Abakiari, engaged the governors on the autonomy models for the next constitutional review. The negotiation had not been concluded before the death of Abakiari. Now, now, do you think there is a rush here? I mean, and what could be informing it at this point in time? I really want to agree with the seeming duplicitous position of Barista Ufeli, which in a way is consistent and duplicitous for the first time in my life. I'll be using the word positively. Duplicitous because on the one hand, like I said earlier on, as a constitutional Puritan, on the, you know, on the other hand, as a, as a pragmatist analyst, I can't sit here. Like Ufeli rightly, rightly painted, you know, um, metaphorically and otherwise, the governors have become little, little emperors. And let me be very honest with you. Um, I am sitting there very disturbed that organic federalism is again being, being operationally or systemically muzzled, further muzzled. However, just as my colleague, Barista Ufeli, had well accentuated the abusive tendencies of the governor and the megalomaniacal tendencies of the governors to want to control just about everything in their state, in their states, is telling me, Bola, on this matter, at this juncture of our constitutional journey, rest this rest your puritanism for pragmatism. But I think this executive order 10 will further generate controversy enough to let the president and his, and his as the president and the attorney general know that we are now moving to that point where a constitutional, a dramatic constitutional review. They may want to call it constitutional review, but something akin to a seismic, a, a seismic uh, restructuring of this constitution, because the, we are now at the point where some of the provisions of this constitution are literally, literally, uh, moving antagonistically and, and conflicting with themselves. So uh, uh, the meeting with uh, Abba Kiari, God bless Abba Kiari, so I don't see any Nigerian governor willy-nilly, enthusiastically allowing the other two organs of government in their states, legislatures, and judiciary, I don't see any governor wanting to, indeed, um, one who believes 
that further and more surgical separate separation. Look, the judiciary can the, the judiciary can at best be in the, be financially autonomous, but the methodology through which judges are even selected and recommended to the agency for appointment, for me, is warped. I would rather that the members of the Nigerian Bar Association in the state and some other professional interests and some other apolitical interests look at the character, review his or her brilliance, put him up for recommendation to the NDC. When you have a sitting governor using the machinery, the megalomaniacal machinery of the executive to nominate people and send their, send their names to the NDC, so many things are faulty with the constitution we are running. And to be honest with you, this is just a tip of the iceberg. We will get to a point where a fundamental seismic review of that of this constitution must be done. All right, now, um, Dr. Austin Wazy. Now, some people have said that already that the federal le legislature and judiciary are enjoying financial autonomy in line with the constitutional provisions which have made it possible for them to receive the allocations from the source and that this should suffice instead of the executive order that has been passed. Do you agree? Yes, because one is that states have, uh, I'm not sure there's any state that is withholding money of the judiciary or the uh, legislature. I don't know of any. You know, so... Yes. It, it, Virtually the all that, of them, Dr. Nwezi. Yeah. Almost, almost all of them. Well, well, not anyway, like I said, not to my knowledge. You're just telling me now because they seem to have a good relationship. But what the point is, what they are afraid of, the federal government is afraid of, the uh, trying to reduce the powers of the state gov governors, they are also going to commit the same thing because more powers will be vested on them. Any other piece of uh, legislation, they, the legislation they want, they can easily muscle out the state uh, assemblies to agree to their own uh, uh, queens and caprices. So that is the point. Again, you are creating a government within a government, giving autonomy. There are other fundamental things that need to be to be uh, uh, you know uh, overhauled or to, to be uh, changed. And you you by doing this, you're creating a government within a government. There's bound to be disrespects, and there's bound to be confusion. They say where the where there's politely, no respect. I, I politely and humbly disagree so with, my uh, point. with with Dr. Mwezi. Mm. Why, why do you disagree with that with his with his position, Mr. Bolaba? Why do you disagree I, with that? I, I politely, I politely and humbly disagree with with Dr. Mwezi. The and reasons, the reason please. why I'm disagreeing with Dr. Mwezi is that the citizenry will get qualitative government more if the organs of government are functionally uh, operate in a way that is functionally consistent with the principle of separation of powers. As separation of powers, federal level, now, no, it's not even at federal level too. They're not talking about federal uh, level. Uh, They're talking about the state. No, Where sir. They focus I, on I, the state. I, 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 at the level of the state, Dr. Mwezi, thank God that you are a very, very local, you, you know, all politics is local. And for having, having contested as a gubernatorial candidate in the state, you must, and I have had you on one or two occasions before, that you were appalled at the level of subservience and docility that you, you've seen in the, legisl in the legislature, that is the status of assembly, of your state where you contested, that you even had a mechanism in your manifesto to make sure that that organ of government would be operationally independent. My, my brother, with all humility, I am one who believes that majority of Nigerian governors, and I'm being very circumspect with my use of language, majority of Nigerian governors are holding their state's houses of assembly as rubber stamp entities, and indeed are using their finance, the ability to dispense funds to the judiciary 
as, as an invisible but potent instrumentality of control of the judiciary. All right, quickly. Then, I know, about, let, let me interject judges, here. Well, judges would have to be looking at the governor to give them houses. So give them very cool. No, but let me, to gentlemen, quality. let me interject here. Ms. Austin, what hold about, your thoughts. What about the quality, the quality of uh, people in those houses? Could it be a problem? So we should be concerned about a process that will make sure that quality individuals get into the state house of assemblies who know the who understand the, the tenets of democracy. All right. So that they can um, Evans Ufeli, Dr. We, Austin, let me interject you know, here. Dr. Austin, pro, just hold your pro, thoughts. Hold your thoughts. Evans Ufeli. It's reported that some of the governors may go to court to contest the constitutionality and legality of the executive order. How do you see this panning out? First of all, before I respond to that, yes, I want to respond to uh, Mr. Austin Wesley. Uh, his submission that um, what the uh, executive order 10 stands so correct in the states should also be affected at the federal level. I want to say that at the federal level, the legislature at the federal level get their money from the first line charge. And same applied to the other arm of government. So at the federal level, there is no um, problem of Mostly. sort. There is no problem of sort. What we have in the state is a lopsidedness of a complete convolution and uh, a discard of constitutional provision, which the governor swore to hold sacred upon, upon their uh, ascension to office. So that said and rested. Talking about the governors who um, are talking about going to court to test uh, the watchers as it relates to the issue at hand. Well, I, I wish them luck, but I do not envisage or see a Supreme Court um, fronting and then uh, putting uh, support and finality to illegality. It will oh. not go down well with a rational judicial jurisprudential system of the Supreme Court to make pronouncements that will come in contravention with the spirit, letters, and intention of the drafters of the Constitution. All right, quickly, gentlemen, in Law just, in just 60 seconds, science. Evans, in just, yeah, we're running out of time on this segment. In just 60 seconds, gentlemen, now, some of the governors, especially those in opposition, feel Buhari is using the executive order to subvert the Constitution with a view to caging them. Do you agree? I'm going to go with you, Evans, in just 60 seconds, no, please. No, let, let's look at intentment. If there, were, if there were no mischief, if the governors were not observing that section of the Constitution in breach, would there have been a need for an executive order 10? The president is empowered under the Constitution, okay, to defend the Constitution and to make clarifications as to the provisions of the Constitution. Here there is a mischief. Here there is a provision that has been observed in breach. It is only rational. How be it against the principles of federalism? But it is only rational to call to order those who are masterminding the degradation, the contamination, and the banner contempt that the governors have hinged on the process to right, drag Dr. down Dr. Evans, your, your democracy. Time's up. Now, Dr. Austin, quickly in reaction to that, please. Do, do you think the executive order has been said by some governors is used to, to cage in them? Do you think so? Dr. Austin, are you there? Mr. Balaba, can you hear me? I can hear you well. Uh, okay, let me, like let me take your quick reaction, please, in just 60 seconds as we wrap up the segment. To be very honest with you, I am not one at this point who uh, is inclined to empathize with the government. Uh, the reason is that in so much as I am a federalist and I see this executive order 10 as being inconsistent with the spirit of federalism, I cannot discountenance the enormous 
historical abuses of gubernatorial characters on the other arms, the other organs of government in their states from 1999. It is so much that, it, it was so much that a senior advocate of Nigeria had to go to, to the judiciary and he got judgment at that. After that judgment, an amendment was made to that effect of the Constitution. Right. And yet, a superior pronouncement of court and a, 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 a lizard, a lizard or surgical constitutional amendment, the governors are still breaching the spirit of suppression of powers. My brother, uh, in this matter, I cast my sympathy more, more for the presidency than, okay. than the government. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. You're still with us on the next yeah. segment. We lost connection there with Dr. Austin Oweze, but we'll continue with the next segment with every one of you. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, the cause for restructuring is back. Stay with us.